a todos. Buenas tardes, buenas noches para los que nos estén viendo en esta tarde o noche. Mi nombre es Tashira Marí Valentín Feliciano y soy asociada de programas de El Mano Project a través de Hispanic Access Foundation. Yo le hablo hoy aquí desde Tampa, Florida, pero como siempre le digo a mi equipo, mi corazón siempre estará en Puerto Rico, el lugar que me vio nacer. Pero para hablar más de hoy, estoy aquí feliz y emotiva por el arduo trabajo que hemos puesto para poder brindarles el evento de hoy. Daremos un leve viaje a través del tiempo para reflexionar y celebrar todos los logros de este año. Pero antes de que comience la celebración, vamos a dar gracias. Una palabra que aunque parece simple, es altamente poderosa. Todo esto no sería posible sin nuestros líderes y nuestra amplia red y comunidad que siempre está apoyándonos en todo el proceso. Pero yo no estoy sola hoy. Me acompaña mi compañero de ceremonias, David. Ah, uh, thank you, Yashira. I am so excited about our program today. My name is David Armijo. I am the chief of programs for Hispanic Access Foundation. I'm coming to you from Houston, Texas. And like Yashida, my heart is always home in New Mexico. I love my, my, my home state. I'm just a proud New Mexican through and through. And I'm a proud Texan too, but my heart is always back home in New Mexico. You know, our network leaders are so important to the work we do. We utilize these leaders to help us understand the needs of our community They help us to design and lead programs in the field. They work as advisors and leaders, and they help us to empower and reach local communities. They set the stage for us to lead together. Concuerdo contigo, David, de verdad que me pongo a pensar, y no es solamente eso, sino también tenemos que recalcar el gran impacto que han logrado en sus respectivas comunidades, y así con el empeño y pasión que lo han logrado. Estoy emocionada de ver alguna de estas historias que de verdad no hacen justicia a la grandiosa labor que se está logrando día a día. Desde nuevos líderes hasta conocidos y allegados de nuestra red han dado cátedra en lo que hacen. Así que veremos de todo. Pero primero te tengo que decir, David, que les hemos traído hoy a todos una invitada especial. ¿Puedes creer que Luisa de la película Encanto está aquí con nosotros? Pero para explicarles hoy un poquito mejor, Jessica Darrow, que es la voz de Luisa, nos honra con su presencia hoy. I am so excited, Yashida. Uh, Encanto is one of my family's favorite movies, and Jessica Darrow is a Cuban-American actress and singer. She was born and raised in Miami, Florida. Jessica has been a storyteller her whole life. She used to write stories and perform them out loud in front of her class ever since she was in the fourth grade. She would write and create characters. She would play on her uh, school's morning announcements. Jessica attended Rutgers University, where she received her BFA in acting from Mason Gross School of the Arts. As part of that program, she spent her junior year in London studying Shakespeare at the famous Globe Theater. Once she graduated, Jessica booked her first role in Feast of the Seven Fishes. This role was the catalyst for a series of events that led to Jessica being booked as the lead role in Encanto. Let's listen to what Jessica has to say with us today. Mi beautiful gente. Uh, mi nombre es Jessica Darrow y yo soy una queer Latina actriz. Um, that some of you may recognize my voice from a funny little movie where I play a very strong, very buff, sexy Latina character with super strength. Um, the movie is called Encanto, and uh, it is about a family that has. Um, a miracle, an encanto, placed on them uh, when they are displaced several years ago uh, in a very traumatic event, um, something that has happened to a lot of Latino countries. This miracle, this encanto, uh, is certainly a gift and helps the family give back to the community in so many ways. Um, and I think it really is a perfect example of what community means to um, Latino people. 
Um, you know, community is just, comunidad is important um, in so many ways. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Hispanic Access Foundation for asking me to uh, speak with you guys. Hispanic Heritage Month is super special because it lasts technically throughout two months, which is cool. Um, September and October is like the best time of the year. Uh, duh, it's the best time to go out into the streets and dance. The weather is beautiful. Um, we are closing a summer of hard work and also enjoying ourselves. Um, you know, thinking of our families, spending time with our families, cooking, cleaning, uh, starting anew. And I think September and October is a beautiful time to consider the new things you want to go, start considering the new things you'd like to head into the new year with. Um, and I think community is a huge part of how we make our lives move forward. I know for me, um, as a child of immigrants, I was raised by um, my mom and my abuela, who are both immigrants uh, from Cuba, who came to America with a lot of fear in their heart, but a lot of hope. Um, and my abuela especially, could not imagine a life outside of Cuba. I remember her telling me when I was little um, that so many freedoms that I have here, I am so lucky to have, I am blessed. Um, and when I say here, I mean home in Miami. I'm actually in London at the moment uh, because I have been uh, blessed to film a new TV show. So my my career has now taken um, a path that I could only have ever dreamed of, thanks to my Encanto community and, you know, the path, the journey that my career has taken because of one job. Um, it's now led to something else that is also wonderful. And um, it is another story about community and how important community is to help people feel seen and heard. Uh, all that to say, uh, so I was often reminded of how lucky I was to be able to have the freedoms that I did as a child, as I know a lot of children of immigrants are always reminded of, even children who are, who are immigrants themselves and came to America at a very young age. Um, and growing up, you know, not only did I have to consider those things, but not everyone not everyone around me had to do so. However, something that I was blessed with, though, you know, I had to remember, you know, where my family came from, how lucky I was, it also instilled a sense of, of course, humility and empathy and gratefulness, but it, it allowed me the skill of talking to other people, opening up, not being afraid to speak about my truth and also ask for help. Though that may not be the same experience for everyone. I know for me, um, I I came from a, a very big family. Um, you know, our family not only consisted of like blood relatives, but we had a lot of friends. And you know, the saying is true. Uh, it really does take a village to raise a child. And I think the in Latino families specifically, the village is just always getting bigger. It never stops. And the village mentality is something that uh, Comunidad is, is based off of. Um, comunidad is your own village of people looking out for each other. And I was raised with a lot of people looking out for me, giving me a lot of support and love. And because of that, I feel very lucky that I I show love in the same way. And as I began to grow older and started seeking, you know, schools that I wanted to go to to further my career, what I wanted to do specifically, I always knew that I wanted to perform, but I could not have gotten to where I am without the endless support of my family who did not always financially have um, what it took to support me, but they always seemed to make it work. And when I was younger, I saw how hard it was, but I never saw them 
really act like weak or ask any questions. It was like if I wanted to do this and I knew that I could make a life for myself with this and it was something that made me happy and made my dreams come true, then my family was going to continue to risk it all for me. And I think that's what comunidad is. It's knowing that you've got this unconditional love that comes from a group of people who share your story, uh, know where you came from, and uh, relatability is what holds it all together. Um, culture is uh, something very special to those of us who, um, you know, may feel when we're younger are have different weird cultures, have a culture that may not be accepted or it may be looked down upon. Um, as a 27-year-old queer Latino woman, I feel luckier than ever that I have a Latino culture to call my home uh, and to call my own. If you know, I didn't know that there was going to be love and support. It would be difficult, but I am able to stand tall and proud and represent um, these two amazing communities uh, because I know that there's so many of us. Uh, and to be Latino is a huge gift and to be able to have the gift of community Comunidad is uh, is everything. And at this point in my career, after being able to do such an important film for an incredible community um, that has been um, not looked after and not acknowledged, constantly had a negative name put out about it for years, to be able to bring the beautiful Latino community to light, to mainstream, and a in a positive light uh, has been the greatest gift as an actor that I could have ever received. And I didn't know that it would be something that was in the stars for me. Um, I just knew that I I wanted to act and, and make sure that I, I prayed that I could support my family that way. I prayed that I could make a difference because unfortunately I knew that it wasn't in the stars for me to be a doctor or a lawyer uh, as much to my abuela's dismay, but, um, you know, she's actually passed now, and I know that she would be so proud of me. Um, I have her tattooed right here on my arm. Her name was Enriqueta Prudencia Ejea, and I think about her every day. Um, she raised me, and uh, though she was loca, she instilled the patience, the drive, and uh, the mental fortitude. Uh, that I now have um, that really convinces me that I can get through anything. If she could get through what she did, I know that I can make a difference. And having been able to do Encanto has made me realize that it is my duty as an actor and an activist while I have this access and platform that I do to make sure to only tell important stories from here on out and to uplift my community with me. Um, I've never been given that chance. And I think the beauty of community is to always remember those who came before you and to keep each other by our side. Um, and, you know, the beautiful thing about Latino community is like, as long as I'm eating, you're eating too. So I'm here to, um, to say we all eating this Hispanic Heritage Month and um, let us celebrate with love in our hearts we can go through anything we can get through it especially if we had each if we have each other with the power of comunidad anything is possible Buenas tardes a todos. Bienvenidos. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we're so overjoyed to spend this time with you. Um, nos encanta tenerlos todos con nosotros. I am so inspired by Jessica and grateful for her being so open to sharing her story with such honesty and candidness and for her love of her Hispanic heritage. I'm 
very inspired by the strength she described of her abuela and her mother who arrived uh, in the U.S. from Cuba facing fear and hope. Community supporting each other is so needed and makes it possible for our familias and younger generations to follow our dreams just the way Jessica did and has. Hispanic Access Foundation is about prioritizing the needs of communities first. Para nosotros se trata de comunidad. Community leaders work tirelessly to make their communities better. And they need our help. They need access, capacity, and the confidence that they can create big changes. Necesitamos esa confianza que podemos hacer cosas grandes. But it really takes friendships to be able to know where the barriers are that need to be broken. It takes ganas and love and collaboration to be present and provide support and resources and expertise to ensure that the change that a local leader or a local community wants happens. I've always thought of my parents, Elena and Jose, and how much they served their familia, but also how much they did for so many, many others, a whole community in my lifetime and that's, in, ins- in essence, what our comunidad is about. It's about you. It's about your comunidades. You are the most important drivers of Hispanic Access's work. This has been a big year for us. We've returned to in-person relationship building. For us being present in comunidad, listening, supporting, and strengthening their efforts has been a blessing. For Hispanic Access has also been a year of our team, our board of directors, our networks, and our partnerships having expanded. Some of the key highlights that I'd love to share with you about our work this year um, include our partnership with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service through the MONO Project, which has grown exponentially this year with the new addition of the Civilian Climate Corps program. Hispanic Access has been become the sole partner for the Directorate Fellowship Program, a high impact program that creates jobs, builds leaders, improves comunidades, and changes the face of our workforce. Our partnership with the U.S. Health and Human Services HRSA agency has helped us to equip and resource community networks to deploy COVID-19 vaccinations to local Latino communities that have been the hardest to reach. 125 clinics in nine states were activated by our faith-based community network leaders with such success that they're now being seen as a critical resource in their communities by local government, local nonprofits, and other partners. Our work to support the El Paso, Texas community as they work to permanently protect an important place in their uh, community called Kastner Range as a national monument has gained a lot of traction. This campaign led by wonderful partners, Frontera Land Alliance has had a successful visit from Secretary Deb Holland and our network partner, Pastor Moses Borjas, his familia and his communities um, had a successful visit from uh, Secretary Deb Holland of the Department of Interior. Uh, And they have come to DC, they've delivered thousands of letters from the community to meet and have met with decision makers. And it was a real proud moment to be able to see and hear mariachis playing at the steps of the US Department of Interior here in Washington, DC. Our Spotlight Stories campaign uh, led by our Department of Communications um, and, and Communications team has brought me so much joy this year. Hispanic Access has highlighted about 32 members of our network so far this year, uplifting untold stories of hidden strength in our communities. And my favorite time of the year, Latino Conservation Week, was celebrated this summer across the nation with 220 events. And our thanks goes to Latino Outdoors, a really wonderful trusted partner who worked very hard with us to make This is a successful week across communities. I also want to mention that we were invited by the Northern Chumash 
tribal council to collaborate and support their national marine sanctuary designation campaign that protects their history and their marine heritage. And this is particularly important to us because tribal sovereignty is a priority for Hispanic access. And may I share one more time how grateful I am. Estoy muy agradecidas con ustedes por su apoyo. I'm so thankful for your support and dedication to our comunidades, to your comunidades. We feel this through your presence today, and we feel so much gratitude that you've shared um, with us as well and how you've cheered on our work and how you're now being introduced to our work um, for many of you. This hard work and the contributions are also yours. Um, muchas gracias. I'm so thankful for your friendship and support. Gracias, Maite. I am always so inspired by your words and your vision for our organization and how you lead us as a team. You are always focused on empowering our communities, and we so appreciate that. Me llena de mucha felicidad, y yo espero que estés emocionado, David, porque esto va a haber un crecimiento exponencial, como ha dicho Maite, y es feliz y estamos emocionados de ser parte de este movimiento. Uh, su manera de crear puentes y la manera de que Hispanic Access Foundation crea esos puentes de acceso que son únicos a nuestra comunidad y son únicos de nuestra organización. Específicamente, yo tengo el privilegio de trabajar con el equipo de Mano Project, My Access to Network Opportunities. Este proyecto con un excelente líder al mando, guiando el camino, ha podido conectar y desarrollar líderes de color a través de internados y oportunidades con agencias federales. Este año solamente hemos manejado sobre 200 pasantes con el Departamento de Interior y entre todo esto nos encontramos con U.S. Fish and Wildlife, National Park Service, U.S. Forest Service, entre otros más. Eh, te digo, David, que esto solo comienza y es uno de mucho más crecimiento que tendría nuestro programa. You know, your mono team is so amazing. You know, the work you do by brokering meaningful paid internships with federal agencies across the country. And through this project, we're able to give young leaders of color the opportunity to advance in their careers. Ashley Ann Perez Rivera, who currently lives in the greater Washington, D.C. area, works as a digital ranger for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. She first became interested in working with the federal government during her Mono Project internship in 2016 through the National Park Service. This internship opened doors for her to pursue her passion in historic preservation and find a permanent position within the Fish and Wildlife Service. Verdaderamente, te tengo que decir que Ashley Ann es un excelente ejemplo de todo lo que nuestros jóvenes, profesionales y líderes de color pueden lograr a través de todos nuestros proyectos a través de Mano Project. Su enfoque en preservación histórica, ciertamente para mí, Ashley Ann, ha abierto mi mente a entender una nueva forma que desconocía de ver la historia de nuestro ancestro con otros lentes. Así que vamos a echar un vistazo al próximo video. Ashley Ann Perez Rivera. My pronouns are she, her, ella, and I'm coming from the lands of the Anacostia. I am a digital media ranger for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, specifically with the National Wildlife Refuge System at headquarters. My first internship in 2016, a lot of things changed for me, or there were many things that inspired me to go in the way that I did in my career. Um, and one of the first things was that there was a conversation around Latinidad and historic preservation. So originally when I started the historic preservation program, I actually didn't want to go to school for historic preservation. I wanted to go to school for architecture um, and that got really expensive. So I switched over to historic preservation because I was a huge history nerd. Um, but a lot of times during my curriculum there um, at my university, they didn't talk about Latinidad. They didn't talk about 
black, indigenous people of color. So when I went to the Latino Heritage Internship Program, I started to get a taste of that other perspective that had been missing in my classroom. Um, and at the same time, it was a really formative year for me in my personal life. So I was able to um, have housing and have a little bit of the stresses, the economic stresses that I had been previously experiencing alleviated. So I was actually able to have fun and get to know the park and get to know the staff there. Um, and that was really what changed my life and made me want to go into public lands um, specifically. So in 2017, I started my internship with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as the Urban Wildlife Conservation Fellow. Um, and I learned so much more about conservation that I could possibly imagine. And I was an unusual voice in the room because I didn't have a wildlife biology background. So my background in historic preservation kind of added a new twist and a new perspective to the program, which was really, really exciting for me and it was really exciting for the service. So I came back to the Fish and Wildlife Service um, as a full-time employee employee in 2020 and I'm so honored and excited to work with the service because I had such a wonderful experience the first time. I really loved how the Fish and Wildlife Service really allowed me um, to become a leader and to learn and to shadow people. It was such a welcoming and inclusive space that I walked into and of course there's always work to be done. There's always ways that we can improve um, but my experience specifically was very positive so I wanted to come back and my goal now as a permanent employee Employee is to make sure that I replicate that same experience for others and constantly improve on that. So I love supporting my colleagues that also have interns and, and fellows and be a mentor and sometimes honestly fellows and interns mentor me more than I could ever mentor them. Um, so I love um, working with the Fish and Wildlife Service and the opportunities that it has come. Qué emocionante historia, eh, David. Eh, de verdad que con nosotros me he quedado impresionada de todo lo que hemos visto y creo que estamos de acuerdo que la admiración es gratificante, la de que tenemos por Ashley Ann y todo lo que ella ha logrado. Y es solo el comienzo, es solamente el comienzo de su trayecto como profesional en esta agencia federal que ella ha elegido como trabajo ahora mismo. Así que, ¿qué piensas, David? I agree. It's through great leaders like Ashley Ann, we're, help, we're able to help move leaders from the sidelines to the front lines. Yashida, let's look at some of our other amazing leaders. Did you know that Hispanic Leadership Network is a mentoring and leadership program for a robust network of faith-based leaders? They represent over 150,000 Latino serving churches throughout the United States and Puerto Rico. Past members have continued to be involved with our initiatives and have served as fierce Hispanic Access leaders. Asimismo es, David, esta red de líderes hispanos ha unido no solamente pastores, pero sino miembros de la comunidad. De igual forma, podemos ver cómo el crecimiento ha expandido sobre 150 mil iglesias sirviendo a nuestros latinos, desde Estados Unidos hasta Puerto Rico, todos unidos. Es por eso que nuestra próxima historia relata todo lo que el pastor Jesús García y su esposa Besaida Pérez Villegas han logrado para su comunidad desde New London, Connecticut, aunque recientemente se han mudado desde San Juan, Puerto Rico. Y a un año de su localización al área que ya habían establecido una gran relación y vínculo, ellos llegaron y rápido se empoderaron del espacio para poder crear ese vínculo con su comunidad, así asistiendo de tal manera que lograron exitosamente liderar una clínica y programa de vacunación de COVID-2019. ¿A quién más estaríamos resaltando ahora, David? Well, you know what Pastor Jesus and Pastora Bestaida have been able to do in New London is incredible. We are just so grateful for the work. And I know coming, you know, just coming from Puerto Rico to Connecticut, culture change, just God just moved them in a powerful way to be able to do such amazing things. But you know what? Yashida, we also have pastores Juan and Rocío Almanza. They come from Colombia, you know, the land of Encanto. 
Uh, but they've resided in Henderson, Nevada for many years. They pastor outside of the Las Vegas area for more than 10 years, and they've worked along Hispanic Access Foundation to support our community-focused programs. And most recently, they are serving as our program managers in the field for our COVID-19 vaccination program. Let's watch these next two videos and learn a little bit about both of these uh, wonderful couples. Saludos, mi nombre es Jesús García, pastor de la Iglesia Church of the City aquí en London, Connecticut, y es una bendición comunicarnos con cada uno de ustedes. Muy buenas tardes, bendiciones. Mi nombre es Betsaida Pérez, soy la esposa del pastor Jesús García y colaboro junto a él en la Iglesia de Church of the City. Nosotros hemos transicionado de Puerto Rico a Connecticut, ya cumplimos ya prácticamente un año aquí en Connecticut, y el hecho de ser parte de la red de liderazgo, pues nos ha ayudado a sembrarnos, a a sentarnos aquí en Estados Unidos ¿verdad? Y, y conocer a otros pastores que ya llevan mucho tiempo ya cómo hacen misiones, cómo hacen el trabajo, eh, tener contactos, relaciones, porque hemos aprendido que el ministerio no se puede hacer solo. Definitivamente el ministerio necesita ser eh, acompañado, necesitamos estar juntos y el estar conectados, aún a pesar de que sean en distintos estados, también en Puerto Rico, nos ayuda a entender, a saber de que no estamos solos en este asunto del reino, que el reino se hace junto, el reino se hace eh, eh, compartiendo, soñando juntos y ciertamente ha sido una bendición eh, conocer a otros pastores y pastoras que están haciendo la diferencia eh, en distintas comunidades, como la pasión, el deseo es contagioso, así que ha sido una verdadera bendición. Decidimos hacer el programa de vacunación, eh, ya estamos aquí ya ubicados en, en Conérico, nos llaman y nos hablan acerca de este proyecto muy importante, entendíamos que era una manera de contribuir a nuestra comunidad, de darle opciones, sobre todo a nuestra comunidad eh, eh, latina aquí en la área de Conérico, específicamente en London. Así que eh, entendíamos que este asunto de la vacunación es sumamente importante y darle la oportunidad a la gente a que pueda escoger si lo querían hacer o no y sobre todo abrir las puertas de la iglesia y en eso pues mi esposa también pues ha estado colaborando. Correcto, correcto. Ha sido una gran bendición poder colaborar con este hermoso proyecto. Hemos tenido diversas experiencias, eh, gente o personas verdad que se han allegado a vacunarse, hispanos, personas eh, afroamericanas, personas americanas, niños desde de seis meses en adelante, así que el impacto ha sido bien favorable para nuestra comunidad y personas que no conocían de nuestra iglesia, como dice el pastor, pues ya se ve, ve la, la posibilidad ¿verdad? de conocer, de, de conocer la pastoral, el equipo de trabajo, y darnos a conocer y también ¿verdad? ayudarlos a ellos en todo lo que es la salud. Gracias, todos, gracias, todos. gracias a todo el mundo de Hispanic Axe sí. Foundation, Cristín, Maite, David, a todo el equipo de trabajo, estamos agradecidos, estamos listos para seguir colaborando, eh, para que podamos seguir brillando, así que gracias por considerarnos, por tomarnos en cuenta eh, y para nosotros una vez más afirmamos aquí en Church of the City, somos la iglesia de la ciudad para la ciudad. Hola a todos, bendiciones. Somos Juan y Rocío Almanza, pastores en Las Vegas desde hace 18 años en el Centro de Adoración Familiar. ¿Cómo nos involucramos con Hispanic Access Foundation? Hace unos años atrás hicimos un evento a nivel ciudad que se llamaba Aviva Vegas. Aviva Vegas y eh, nos contactó alguien de las sociedades bíblicas y resultó ser el doctor Francisco Colab y ya él después eh, ya conocía a Maite y a la organización estaba empezando realmente y nos contactó para hacer un programa de qué fue? Antenas. Antenas. Y ahí desde entonces conocemos a Hispania Access Foundation. ¿Por qué continuamos trabajando con Acceso Hispano? Y apoyando. Y apoyándolo es porque parte de la visión que Dios nos ha dado en CAF ha sido involucrar a la comunidad, trabajar con la ciudad y en Acceso Hispano hemos encontrado programas 
que nos han ayudado a cumplir con ese propósito. Aparte la visión de Hispanic Access está muy encaminada en, 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 un, en un target que nosotros también nos hemos dirigido, que es la población hispana, y también por el estilo de trabajo de ellos, nos ha encantado, nos la llevamos bien, y nos, la verdad nos hemos sentido muy a gusto con Hispanic Access Unidos. Hemos hecho muchos proyectos, todos los proyectos han sido súper interesantes, cada uno de ellos tiene retos nuevos, y creo que nos ha ayudado mucho a crecer como iglesia, como pastores y a establecer nuevas amistades. Creo que como pastores estamos llamados a liderar eh, propuestas nuevas que bendigan a la comunidad y el proyecto de vacunación ha sido muy interesante porque es una manera de mostrar el amor en acción. Cuando tú amas a alguien, tú lo cuidas y qué mejor que vacunarte por amor a ti mismo y a los que están a tu alrededor. Y el entrar en el proyecto de vacunación era no solo estar diciendo oh, vamos a hacer algo, sino realmente hay que hacer algo. El no conocer un proyecto nunca nos ha hecho rechazarlo, rechazarlo o decir ah, no lo vamos a hacer por tal cosa, sino ah, es una nueva herramienta para aprender. Siempre hay que aprender, o sea, ya que dejes de aprender, dejas no, de vivir. Y que digamos que Entonces, te da como ese espacio de creatividad, ese espacio de de desarrollarte con tu personalidad y aportar y sumar, entonces sale chévere, a mí me encanta. Ay, Yo chévere. siempre le digo, si Jaf se arriesga con nosotros, pues, pues hagámosle. Listo, ahí estamos, o sea, siempre lo que sea para edificar a pastores, a comunidad, ahí estaremos siempre. Wow, what, what two great examples of some of the leaders. This just kind of represents the overall heart of our leaders. Uh, they are able to help us move, uh, create bridges of access for our community. This is a way how we are able to reach our communities. And it's such a powerful testament to the things that they're doing out in uh, our communities. Así mismo es, David, eh, pero esto no ha parado, todavía hay más. Y con eso quiero transicionar a Chantel, Chantel Ruidán Hansen, eh, que actualmente está en una misión para incentivar a otros a solicitar a nuestros programas, porque gracias a uno de los programas de nosotros fue que ella tuvo esa curiosidad para poder estar hoy en el trabajo en el cual se encuentra. ¿Sabías tú eso, David? I didn't, I did know that. And she has been working at the San Antonio Mission National Historic Park. She also began her journey with the park back in 2017 as a mono project intern. She interned there for two years and she was able to obtain a permanent position as the first ever bilingual visual interpretation specialist. Así que con eso y mucho más, vamos a ver su video. Hi, my name is Chantel Rudon Hansen. Um, I am the Visual Information Specialist here at San Antonio Missions National Historical Park. So I first heard about the Hispanic Access Foundation through uh, the internship that I did in 2017. And I was a Latino Heritage intern in 2017 here at San Antonio Missions National Historical Park. But I was in uh, college for, for my master's in anthropology. And in the university, as I was walking the halls of my university, there was a flyer for um, LHIP and for the program. So I started here as an LHIP intern doing community outreach and engagement. Um, and so I, I started by doing summer programs with, with kids, teaching them about the missions and teaching them about nature and that nature can be anywhere, right? You don't have to travel really far in an urban city. 
like San Antonio, you know, you can be in your backyard. You can even be in a parking lot. That's kind of how I got started. Um, and I was working on my master's in anthropology. So I had this already this connection between kind of nature and conservation and culture and people, which um, is kind of what, you know, brings together lots of national parks, right? Both the people and the nature. Then I took a little break and was working on my um, graduate work. And then um, I saw an application to be a fellow with San Antonio Missions National Historical Park through Hispanic Access Foundation. I really liked working here and <laughs> I think they really liked working with me. And so I came back for a 10 month fellowship here at San Antonio Missions National Historical Park. And then that got extended to another 10 months <laughs> fellowship because I really liked working here. Um, and I also continued to expand what I was doing within the park. I stayed in that fellowship for quite a while until a, a park guide position opened up and it just so happened to be a bilingual park guide position and so I applied for the bilingual park guide position here and I got it. And that was in 2019. So I was in that position for uh, about two years. Then a position opened up for a visual information specialist. So that's the position I'm doing now and I really love it. I get to be creative. I get to work with, um, the, of course, the park and all of the community to help tell their stories. Um, and here I am now. I continue to work with and support Hispanic Access Foundation working here at, with the National Park Service because my start was with uh, fellowship and internships uh, through Hispanic Access Foundation so that's the reason I'm here and so I want to continue to support of course their mission and their goals and really I, I do the most support by supporting the, uh, the interns that we receive from Hispanic Access Foundation here. Wow, what a great example of how we can elevate Latino voices to ensure equity and representation in all areas of life. And we can leverage those collective voices to build a better America for all of us. Equidad y representación eh, esenciales para nuestra comunidad, David. Esto puede resonar en tu mente y con esto vamos a hablar sobre nuestra próxima historia. En ella resaltamos a Moses Borjas. Cultura, lugar, pertenencia. La base y asentamiento histórico de los latinos se siente en numerosos espacios, en nuestra naturaleza, edificios, objetos, etc. Todos se usan para narrar la historia de nuestro pasado, de nuestros ancestros y cómo han hecho mejor lugar en el presente. Estos lugares necesitan ser protegidos por nuestra administración y uno de estos lugares está ubicado en El Paso, Texas y se llama Kastner Range. Por los pasados cinco años, Moses Borjas ha trabajado en una campaña buscando designar a Kastner Range como un monumento nacional. Desde ese entonces, se ha convertido en un activista abogando por el paisaje que rodea a El Paso. Con el momentum que ha ganado este año, ya pronto se avecina a la recta final. ¿Qué crees, David? Uh, it, we're going to check out his story here in just a second, but five years of working on this campaign to designate Kastner Range, that's the kind of commitment that we see in our leaders, just working tirelessly for their communities, uh, constantly working to protect lands, to, to do so much for our communities. Let's check out his story. Hi, my name is Moses Borjas and I'm a pastor here in El Paso, Texas and the name of our church is called Living Covenant Church. How did I get involved with the Castor Range movement it was very interesting. Five years ago, um, you know, uh, Dr. Maite Arce came down to El Paso and I got to meet her and we talked about Castner Range that day with another team from Frontera Land Alliance, which is a, a local team that works for the protection of Castner Range. And at that moment, it was just the, it, 
I, I guess the, the first steps to see how Hispanic access would get involved with this project. And one of the things that I, I've known about Hispanic Access Foundation is just their desire to work with uh, communities, comunidades, especially with the comunidad hispana, with the Hispanic community. And this has been uh, one of the journeys that I am so blessed to be part of with Hispanic Access Foundation as, you know, a support. Um, and, you know, I know that this year has been a year that we've seen a lot of progress. We've seen a lot of, uh, you know, attention to cast and range like never before. In El Paso, being that we are over 75 percent hispanic you know we are so blessed that we have uh these mountains behind us we are so blessed to have all these benefits of the chihuahua desert here in el paso at the same time uh I know for a fact that many times a lot of the latino communities are you know um i would say they're not looked at as a very important community. I know that a lot of the Latino communities have been put on the background and said, well, maybe next year, maybe next year, maybe next year. But the time is now. Being invited uh, to the Pentagon, being invited to a round table with Secretary Halland, uh, also having the opportunity to interview Congresswoman Escobar here in El Paso, and other opportunities that are coming about. It makes me feel very responsible. It also makes me very excited to know that we are impacting, that our voices are being heard. It just brings joy to my heart to know that, that something is gonna happen. And today as we've been sitting with many of our uh, leaders and, and, and government leaders in our country, it makes us understand that not only does it bring joy, but it brings a sense of responsibility and said, you know, we got to keep moving forward. We cannot give up and we need to keep pressing on. We need to keep moving forward until it happens, until that day that our, our president signs off and says, you know, Castner Range will become a national monument. That's our aim. That's our goal. Hello, everybody. Uh, we would like to take uh, this moment to give special thanks to not only our network, who has been incredible and are, is the reason why we're here together today, um, but also to give special thanks to those who help make it happen uh, through resources. So I'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors, Shine Pact, uh, Dr. Bronner's, and Defenders of Wildlife, who Without them, we could not make this possible. We'd also like to thank the Vacion community, our monthly donors uh, who sustain our work. For those who may not know, Elevacion is a community of supporters for our work here at Hispanic Access. There is no minimum amount to, uh, to get started with us and truly, Every, every gift, no matter how small over time, makes a substantial difference. Monthly donors are the most sustainable source of support that we have as an organization and as a community. And at Elevacion, they are also part of our comunidad. Learn more at hispanicaccess.org slash Elevacion. Um, consider joining us uh, and sustaining the work that we do uh, for our comunidad. Uh, you can also click the support us sign with the dollar sign next to it on the sidebar and uh, pick the monthly option to join Elevacion. Um, I'd also want to share that during this event, we are launching, launching our Hispanic Heritage Month t-shirt fundraiser. Get your limited time Hispanic Access Mejor Juntos t-shirt. 
with the logo on the front and our beautiful art on the back. Only during Hispanic Heritage Month at bonfire.com can this be bought. Uh, once it's over, it's done. So look it up, get the link. You'll find it in the chat and grab yours today. I would love to introduce now our awards program um, for today's celebration. Each year, we recognize leaders and partners who have made a huge impact on our community. This year, we'll be recognizing the Environmental Justice Leadership Award, the Emerging Leader Award, the Outstanding Young Professional, the Partner of the Year, the Network Member of the Year, and Lifetime Achievement Award. While the recipients this year went above and beyond and deserve the recognition of, for their work, I want to just say that we had so many nominations of incredible leaders for each of these awards, and it was very difficult to choose. To the leaders across our networks, thank you, gracias, for your commitment and excellence. And with that, un abrazo fuerte, I'll pass it right back to Shauna to announce our first award. Hi everyone, bienvenidos, and thank you so much for joining us today. I am Shauna Ifrit, the Director of Conservation Programs at Hispanic Access Foundation. And tonight, I am so excited to announce the Environmental Justice Leadership Award, which recognizes an individual that has demonstrated outstanding work in conservation and a true devotion to advocating for environmental justice. As a Chumash descendant of Avila Beach and San Luis Obispo, and the tribal chair of the Northern Chumash Tribal Council, this year's Environmental Justice Leadership Award recipient has worked tirelessly for the designation of a proposed 140 mile Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary, which would help this individual regain her indigenous community's fundamental rights in San, San Luis Obispo, California. Creating the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary would not only benefit the conservation of culturally significant lands and waters, but it will also benefit California as a state and the nation as a whole, as we work towards protecting 30% of lands, waters, and ocean by 2030. In just a few months, this person has engaged our network members of Por la Creación with the Tribal Council's efforts and seeing firsthand how devoted she is towards protecting her community's heritage is a true inspiration. So this year, it is an absolute honor for me to announce our Environmental Justice Leadership Award winner is Violet Sage Walker. Saludos a todos y gracias por unirte con nosotros hoy. My name is Nina Marti and I am Program Manager for Hispanic Access Foundation's MANO Project. Every year, hundreds of interns and fellows embark on new career journeys through our partnerships with federal agencies such as U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, U.S. Forest Service, and National Park Service. They count on us for support and guidance so that they may grow from passionate students and new professionals to leaders in their organizations and communities. However, what they may not realize is how much we are counting on them to lead us into a future where our climate and environment can heal and where our communities can reap the benefits of green space, clear water, and clean air. This year's Emerging Leader Award recipient joined us in January as part of our inaugural Civilian Climate Corps Fellowship Program with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. He grew up in Caracas, Venezuela, rich in biodiversity and culture that influences his work today. He graduated from University of California, Santa Barbara in 2021 with a bachelor's in environmental science and stepped into a professional world that had yet to adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic. His intelligence, work ethic, and grace was palpable from our initial conversations during the interview process. And clearly I wasn't the only one who noticed. He was selected to join the staff at the Big Oaks and Muscatatuck National Wildlife Refuge Complex in Indiana for 78 weeks 
where he analyzes the ways in which climate change threatens the existence of refuge resources and is developing a framework to mitigate those threats. Not one to rest in an ivory tower, he is always looking to engage his community and his peers, whether it's on, tour of, on a tour of the refuge, at our virtual events, or on camera for a US Nature for Climate campaign. But regardless of the avenue, he always connects and collaborates with humility and a smile. For his contributions to climate and community, we would like to recognize Gabriel Van Praag as our Emerging Leader Award recipient for 2022. Good evening, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here with all of you today. I'm Michelle Neuenschwander, the Mono Project Director, and I'm super excited to announce the recipient for the Outstanding Young Professional Award. This award recognizes an alumna of the Mono Project that has proven to be an excellent and trustworthy network member. The recipient of this award is not only a dedicated advocate of Hispanic access, but also the ocean environmental issues but also the ocean environmental issues she is passionate about. She was hired by the Mono Project in 2017 as a digital media ranger for the National Wildlife Refuge System administered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Since then, she has continued to stay involved in our network by leading multiple Latino Conservation Week events throughout the years, participating in Latino Advocacy Week and becoming a member of our Ocean Advisory Council. Through the Council, she has planned events, conservation initiatives, and research projects to educate the public on coastal issues and their impact on social groups. Shli also currently serves on our Mono Alumni Advisory Board and will provide guidance and insights for future Mono programming. Her initiatives to protect wildlife and the environment have not only shaped her leadership, but have allowed her to create a pathway for Latinos and Latinas uh, that want to make a difference in their communities. This year, it is an honor to announce the recipient of the Outstanding Young Professionals Award to Shli Suarez Burgos. Well, I have the honor of introducing a couple of awards. I have the honor of introducing the Partner of the Year. Uh, today, it is so exciting to be able to announce this Partner of the Year, a federal agency that has served as an exceptional partner and has been instrumental in helping us towards our mission of making an impact on the lives and livelihoods of young Latinos. We're an organization, a team, and a community of people who place high importance on building long-term trusted, trust-based relationships. Our partnership with fish and wildlife, we share some common values, including purpose in our community, careers that make a difference in the world that young people are passionate about, and also that our collective work sets a standard worth trusting. Working with regional leadership, including the Fish and Wildlife Northeast regions, where our partnership originated in 2016, as well as with the national leadership that includes Shannon Estones and Martha Williams, has been very important. They are champions of the Mono Project, and due to their commitment to equity and ensuring that the Fish and Wildlife Service gets the best talent available in America, and guess what? It's succeeding. Some of our best young leaders are now employed at the service. People within the Fish and Wildlife Service have made a difference in our work. For example, Shannon Smith supported our request with determined action when we asked Fish and Wildlife Service funding partners to reevaluate the low paying stipends and increase them. When we think about equity and inclusion, Shannon's example shines through for us. We appreciate that Fish and Wildlife Service is proactive in finding ways to mitigate bias in the recruitment process and break down barriers of access for communities of color. 
for example. They reimagined eligibility standards and interview formats to be more inclusive of life experience, interest, and dedication versus solely on considering education privilege in interviewees' backgrounds. They also respect our insight and our, contribu our contributions to these partnerships by including us in program development conversations. Through its new cli Civil Climate Core program, they have set the standard in competitive benefits, program offering offerings, and quality mentorship for interns and fellows. This year, it is an honor to announce our Partner of the Year, year is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. We're tremendously thankful for your trusted partnership. Uh, having administered over 121 internship, internships and fellowships in this year alone across about 68 offices, sites, and urban refuges among all nine regions, including Alaska and Puerto Rico. Hello everyone, saludos a todos. My name is Christine Zamana. I am the Partnership Engagement Director here at Hispanic Access Foundation. And today I would like to share about the Network Members of the Year. These leaders are passionate leaders consistently ensuring that not only does the community where they live have access to resources, opportunities, and move from surviving to thriving, but also communities across the entire nation have them as well. Hand in hand, the recipients of this award tirelessly serve inside and outside the walls of their place of worship, whether it be teaching on caring for creation, organizing events on public lands, participating in Latino Conservation Week, serving as advisors for our Hispanic Leadership Network and Por La Creación Network, and helping oversee our HRSA project that provides isolated communities the choice to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. These leaders have become an important part of Hispanic Access Foundation's leadership network, and it's because of leaders like them, Hispanic Access is able to come together with the community to build bridges and establish a more equitable society. So this year, I am happy to announce our network members of the year, our pastors Juan and Rocio Almanza. Congratulations. Felicidades. Well, I get to be... Uh, uh, back on again for another great honor to be able to present our Hispanic Access Lifetime Achievement Award. And this award is really important to all of us here at Hispanic Access. Leadership, as you know, can be very lonely. It's so important for us to name, honor, and show our gratitude to the leaders who have been trailblazers for our community throughout their lives, opening opportunities for others, volunteering their time, taking the risks they had to be taken, learning along the way, and leading by example. Our honoree has had a long and distinguished career in public service. He started out as a page in Congress. Can you imagine a young boy from a small town in New Mexico? Big shout out to New Mexicans. Go New Mexico. Now he's the leader. He's the leader at the Library of Congress where he oversees thousands of federal employees. There are many styles of leaderships, and I consider his leadership to be one of the best because he is humble, straightforward, courageous, loving, he challenges, and always pushes for the highest standards. This honoree contributed his time to Hispanic Access for the past 12 years as chairman of the board. For many years, he's mentored and supported many of us, including Maite, in her leadership path. He was present and active during times of celebration and good news, but especially during times of challenge. A great leader is extremely valuable in a time of crisis or difficulty. He's one of those leaders. We feel so blessed to have known him for so long and to have his friendship. 
We're grateful there are many people working under his leadership where he will make a difference and provide them with capacity, wisdom, laughter, and kindness. I am honored and happy to announce that our 2022 Lifetime Achievement Award winner is Roberto Salazar. And in honor of Roberto's lifetime achievement and his service to Hispanic Access Foundation and so many others, I would like to share that we are establishing the Roberto Salazar Aspire Scholarship. Coming up in 2023, Hispanic Access will be awarding a $10,000 scholarship to a dreamer who aspires to do more for their community. The scholarship will be announced at next year's Accesso event. Today, the theme that I have noticed has been not only about Hispanic heritage, but also about community and love in action and gratitude. I am thankful that you are all here with us on this long, long journey to uplift communities. Yashida. Can you believe all the great things that have gone on? Can you, can you believe all the great partners that we are able to work beside, that we are able to uh, just be a part of como una familia, es más de comunidad, es como una familia. We're like family. It, it's just, we work even within the organization, we work remotely. There are people from all over the country, Hawaii, Alaska, Puerto Rico, in the 48 uh, continuous states, but we all feel like family. We It's more than just comunidad. ¿Qué no crees? Yo, yo estoy de acuerdo contigo, David, y de verdad que la labor de nuestras redes es altamente impresionante. Eh, me quedo sin palabras cuando escucho todo lo que han logrado y siento que desde los eventos, las historias, los videos, y los diferentes eh, presentaciones que tuvimos en la tarde o noche de hoy, todo en palabras simples nos lleva a lo esencial para nuestra organización. Y escucha bien, es elevar las voces de nuestra comunidad, desarrollar líderes y expandir y proveer acceso a nuestros latinos. Uh, para mí, esa es la clave de todo. ¿Qué piensas tú, David? I agree completely with you, Yashira. Uh, you know, we're coming to the end of our program tonight, and I just want to thank everybody for joining us. And we hope that you'll continue to join us for more of our key initiatives in the future. Our Heritage, our Planet Film Week is happening at the end of Hispanic Heritage Month. So from October 11th through 14th, you'll be able to see some incredible films that we have chosen for this year's uh, Film Week. We have Latino Advocacy Week in March uh, March 13th through 17th in 2023, Latino Conservation Week, July 16th through the 22nd of next year. We also have a Dream Scholarship coming up at the end of November. Please always join us for these key initiatives. We could not do what we do without your support and your help, and we appreciate you being here with us. Gracias por, por anunciar todos esos eventos, David, y espero que nuestra comunidad haya escuchado y solicite y se registre a todos ellos, desde Latino Conservation Week a Latino Advocacy, a OHA, todos estos eventos son y para ustedes siempre estarán. Así que gracias por todo lo que han hecho, gracias por estar presentes, nunca es suficiente decir gracias. Eh, todo el apoyo de nuestra comunidad por hacer estos eventos realidad, para el disfrute y deleite de todos ustedes. Por ahora, nos verán en otro momento, pero cerramos con un fuerte abrazo y le deseamos una hermosa y bonita noche. Gracias. Good night. And hey, if you want to hang out and do some more networking, feel free to jump back in. We are welcome to sit at tables, uh, talk a little bit. If you have questions about some of our programs or you want to get to know some of our team a little bit better, find us at some of the tables. We're going to hang out for a little while afterward. Feel free to join us. Grab your cafecito or whatever your, your beverage of choice might be. Sit around. Let's enjoy ourselves if you have time. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. And I know on behalf of Maite, 
We really appreciate all your support and energy at working closely with us. Thank you so much. See you at one of the tables. Nos vemos pronto.